Welcome to the FCA Leadership Forum Five Question Series. I'm Max Kakis, Defense Editor of Signal Magazine. Our guest today is Chris Inglis, Deputy Director of the National Security Agency. A senior civilian at NSA, Mr. Inglis acts as the agency's Chief Operating Officer, guiding and directing operations, strategies, and policy. He also serves as Principal Advisor to the Director. A former U.S. Air Force officer and pilot, Mr. Inglis retired as a Brigadier General in the Air National Guard five years ago. Chris, welcome to AFC and thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Max. Thank you for having me. Let me start by asking you, what do you consider the characteristics in an individual that would mark that person as a potential leader? I tend to be in the camp that thinks just about everybody has the potential to be a leader. I mm -hmm. think that the salient characteristic that marks somebody as being prospectively a good leader is that they have a passion about something, in particular something that exceeds their own self-interest. Mm -hmm. And when you say that it, someone has to have a passion, how, do, how, does that, how does that manifest itself? Well, I think uh, my fundamental definition of a leader is somebody who convinces other people that there is either some different way or some different goal that is appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, kind of in short form, that a leader helps people understand that there is perhaps a goal that uh, previously would have seemed impossible or mm -hmm. previously would not have been on the radar screen. And if you have a passion for something and if you can communicate that, find people that you can create common cause in, you've got the marking, the makings of being a good leader. Mm -hmm. So would you say that uh, that passion and that ability to persuade people uh, is maybe the most important aspect of being a leader? I think it is the most important aspect of being a leader. It's certainly uh, what makes you um, of high potential to be a leader. Mm -hmm. um, there are all manner of things in terms of skills and practice and commitment that are required to follow through on that potential. Mm -hmm. When do you know that your leadership style is working? What are, what are some of the things that happen uh, when a leader is doing what he or she is supposed to be doing? I think there are two ways to look at that. Uh, the first lens is through the lens of the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, does the organization have a good sense of what it's supposed to be doing? Um, everybody in the organization can essentially give you the same story about what the larger purpose of that organization is. Mm -hmm. That then translates into everyone knows what their contribution to that might be. That's particularly important in a diverse organization, a strong organization, where you have very and, and sundry perspectives because of the diversity inherent in those people. If those two things are true and a third property, which is the organization has the ability to discern change in its environment, then I think you can say that you've been successful as a leader in rallying a diverse group of people to common cause. And I guess that becomes more interesting a challenge the higher up you rise as a leader in, or, in an organization. It does. Um, I think it's, um, I wouldn't say it's simple at the tactical level, <laughs> um, but the set of things that are changing and your ability to then adjust to those, um, you know, it's, it's a bit simpler. Um, at a uh, level two or three or four removed from where the real work takes place, mm -hmm. you have to delegate to a greater degree. You have to be able to speak in common terms to a greater degree. Um, and you have to understand what the reality is on the ground, but at the same time articulate that in a way that it speaks to everyone. Mm -hmm. Let's look at leadership from another angle. What would you consider your greatest failure, and what did you learn from that failure? I think the, uh, the characteristics of that moment when I had my greatest failure as a leader um, were when I kind of moved back from being a leader and I was managing a situation, um, and in the particular case that I can think of where I essentially let a sense of urgency give way to panic. I was managing the situation, urging people to have a sense of urgency about that, mm -hmm. but forgetting what it was like to look through the eyes of the people I was exhorting to do something. Um, and all of a sudden realized that there was incoherence and a bit of chaos in the situation uh, because I had forgotten how to communicate, how to connect people, um, and perhaps to give a sense of urgency without broadening um, a sense of panic. Mm -hmm. Were you able to recover from that? I was. Um, actually, I had some great advisors, people close in, who said, you really ought to listen to this particular mm -hmm. um, noise coming from the organization, this particular uh, piece of feedback. Um, and we reset, and because we were in a place where we had some excellent people in uh, my leadership team, uh, we're able to then move off um, at the proper speed, um, not so far, perhaps reckless or rash, uh, but at the right speed, deliberate speed against an ever-evolving situation. Okay. Fifth question, who are your heroes? Um, I think that um, my heroes in the leadership realm would be, uh, at the moment, um, any company grade officer or non-commissioned officer serving in harm's way in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, that's where um, United States policy, military objectives uh, meet the reality of the uncertain conditions, the chaotic royal um, that, that are the real world conditions. 
and where are people who serve in harm's way or daily served by that degree of leadership who connect them to that larger cause. Mm, very good. Chris, we want to thank you for giving us your insight and perspective on leadership, and uh, we appreciate your support. Good luck on your future endeavors. Thank you, Max.